Hello YouTube community and welcome back to another video. My name is Matthias, for those of you who don't know me, I am an underwater cinematographer and filmmaker based in Zurich, Switzerland. And on this channel here, we talk about underwater filmmaking, we talk about travel videos and we talk about filmmaking in general. So if any of these topics are of interest to you, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any content that will be uploaded here in the future. Now in my last video I shared with you my preferred settings for shooting underwater video with the GH5 in the Nauticam housing. If you haven't seen my last video yet, I'll link it up here somewhere, so please feel free to go and check that out and see what kind of settings I'm using with my GH5 to get the best possible raw footage before I bring it into Final Cut for color grading. And as a next step to that video, in today's video, I want to show you how I color grade my underwater footage in Final Cut Pro. Coming up. Okay, here we are in Final Cut Pro 10. This is my preferred software that I use for color grading. Um, and editing um, all my videos, including my underwater shots. I've got four clips prepared for you guys that we're gonna go through when it comes to color grading underwater shots. So we've got one of a turtle with a blue background, we've got a little nudie branch on a sandy ground, uh, we've got some divers in a fairly dark uh, cavern, and we have a diver in shallow water watching a fish eating a jellyfish. So, as you can see, I've got my scopes open up here in the left top corner. These are the ones that I like working with. Very important for me is the Luma um, scope, which shows me the contrast and whether or not I am um, over or underexposed anywhere in my shot. Then I've got the vector scope, which um, helps me identify uh, whether or not two different shots that come after each other do have sort of the same saturation. And I've also got the RGB parade down here, which shows me the distribution of the different colors, red, green, and blue in the picture. So let's open up our color wheels here. And before we get into the color wheels, because normally I would use the color wheels to color grade the footage, but first I want to show you a little trick that you probably already know if you have been working with Final Cut Pro 10 for a while. Um, I find it very useful and I do use it quite often, um, especially when I'm trying to edit uh, a little quicker. So here on the left hand side, right about the middle of the screen, you'll see the three icons. If you click on that little stick here in the middle and then you get the option to choose a automatic color correction. Now pay attention to the image and pay attention to the scopes, how they change once we activate this you can see how the image has changed and you can also see how the scopes have changed. Now, up here you can see that we've got more contrast in our picture. Not quite okay for me yet, but it's getting there. We're definitely better than before. Um, and down here you can see that the RGB parades, the distribution of the colors, they have been not quite equaled, but brought closer together. So this is a good start for us to um, start our color grade from here. Now you also have the option, if you don't wanna do an automatic, oops, an automatic color correction, you can do a manual color correction and then you can just tip somewhere on the screen, uh, preferably a place that is white or whitish, uh, and then it will adjust the color according to that also works quite well, especially if you've got some sand somewhere, uh, it normally works quite nicely. So having done this, we can then go into our color wheels, the ones that we normally, or that I normally use for color grading my footage. And obviously I still wanna get some more contrast into this. So the shadows looking up here, they're around, 35, 40, so I can bring them down a little more, get some more contrast into the picture. And as I'm doing this, you can already see that 
the picture starts looking much, much nicer just by having done this. I don't think I wanna push the highlights any higher or maybe just a tiny little bit. Yeah, that's, that's enough. We don't really need more than that. So we've got our highlights just below 100 and we've got our shadows around 25 and I think that's quite okay for this picture or this uh, shot here. And if we compare this to the picture that we had before, you can see that we have quite a big difference already just by having done a few things here and there. Now the next thing that I wanna do is um, work with the saturation and see how I wanna saturate this um, image. So obviously you've got your master wheel that you can just crank the saturation up all together, which you can do, it doesn't actually look too bad, but you can also just work with the separate wheels um, of your shadows, midtones, and highlights to saturate those individually. So for example, my background, my highlights, I do wanna have that a little more saturated, so we get a little more of that bluish color in the background. Um, I do wanna saturate my midtones, but actually just a tiny little bit, not too much. And my shadows, they can be a little more saturated. So we get to something like this. Now that's not too bad. So again, comparing this to what we had before, you can see that there is quite a bit of a difference there. And that's pretty much it for this first clip. Looking back at it, we can say that we got quite a nice color now. If we look at what it looked before originally and compare this to our final clip, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, coming to the second shot of that little nudie branch that we've got here. Now, color correcting this one, I would basically do the same thing as I've done with my previous shot. So we'll go onto the color correction, the auto color correction and press that and you see that it does a lot of the adjustments already. The color distribution here is quite even, which is nice. Um, and even here the contrast looks actually pretty good. In, to me, going to the color wheels, the only thing that I would maybe do is bring down the shadows a little bit to get a little extra contrast in there. But that's about it. And now it really is up to your taste how much you wanna push the contrast in an image like this. Personally, I think the image looks quite nice the way it is, but we can certainly just say, let's bring up our highlights, the saturation of our highlights a little more. It's hard to really see. Well, you can see it in the yellow part. So if you really wanna make that nudie branch pop, you can bring up the saturation there a little more. Sometimes I find it too much. I'm more of an advocate for a subtle color grade, not too extreme, and that also applies to underwater footage. So rather than having it, I mean, we can have it very pop out of the image like this. I don't really like that too much. So we're just gonna bring them up a little bit. Everything else I think is fine. I don't really wanna change any of the other saturation um, parameters uh, on the image, so we'll just leave that as it is. And this is our, here we go, this is our little nudie branch. Moving on to our third picture, and this is one that's probably gonna be hard to start off with the automatic color correction, just simply because it's very dark. Um, but we'll give it a try anyways. So we'll go over here, we'll do the automatic color correction, and it does actually do quite an okay job. It brightens up the picture quite a bit. Um, and it's actually not too bad. If you look at the color distribution, that looks all right. Um, we've got our contrast here, which is okay too. Um, now in this picture, you can see that some, like the lower part here is clipping to the zero, which normally I wouldn't really wanna have, but because this is a scene where we're in a cavern, I think that it's quite okay for us to have some really dark spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring down the shadows even a little more, even a little below the zero point there. I would though bring up the high, not the highlights, but the midtones, 
just a little bit. Okay, and I would bring up the highlights a tiny bit, not too much, but just a tiny little bit. And when it comes to the saturation, I would probably bring up the highlights. So you see this um, hole in the cabin here where light is shining through. I really want to make this pop a little more. So I'm go just going to put more saturation into that blue area there. And you can see if we go down how that changes. And I just, I just really want to push that a little more. That's okay. Um, maybe even bring up the mid-tones a little bit. That might help. So yeah, you see how the blue is actually changing there. It's getting into a more intense blue. And I do like that a lot. So what we've done, we've increased the mid-tones, the saturation in the mid-tones and the uh, highlights quite a bit. I haven't really touched the shadows because I think they define the way they are. And if we compare this to what we had before, this is our picture from before. And now it just really pops a lot more. Uh, it's not a dramatic change. It looks more natural um, this way. So moving along to our last clip, which is the diver here watching this little butterfly fish um, eating a jellyfish. Now with this one again, I will try the automatic color correction, see how that works. So it didn't really do much, um, but it just gave us a little bit of a better position to start off with our um, own color correction. So what I want to do here, looking at the Luma over here, I, I see that it's not touching the zero point yet and it's, it's not really t coming up to 100. So what I want to do is bring down the shadows a little bit. Uh, and I don't really want to bring up the highlights because there's a lot of highlights um, up here um, on the surface. And if I bring them up, I'm probably going to blow them out. Let's see. Yeah, you see that I'm just blowing out now uh, that part. I don't really want that. Um, but what I can do is I can bring up the mid-tones a little bit. So I just make the overall picture a little brighter there without blowing out the highlights too much. And now it comes to uh, putting a little more saturation in the picture. So I would probably just bring up a little bit of saturation in the midtones so that the fish in the foreground gets a little more saturated. This is our main object in the frame. So we do want to have the fish pop a little bit there. Not too much though. Just, just a little bit. Um, and what we can do now as well, now with, with this background, which is quite boring and doesn't really do much to the scene, um, what we can do is we can go to the color curves and uh, we can work with the color and the saturation. So if I define this section here as the color that I want to work with, we can then bring up uh, or saturate that specific color a little better. And having done this, we've now got um, a bit more of a distinction um, between the fore and the background. If I just turn this effect off, you can see that it's not much, but it just gives it a little more bluish, uh, a little more saturation in the bluish part of the image, which in my opinion just uh, works very well with the yellow fish in the foreground and, and just makes the whole scene look a bit more appealing. And that's already all the magic that goes into color grading my underwater footage. I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you got something out of today's video. If that's the case, please do not forget to hit that like button. It really does mean a lot to me. And also consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any content that will be uploaded here in the future. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next week.